to Good One Banks. Good morning. How are you, my <laughs> biking friend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, you know, you made such a great point on Twitter talking about all these, Kevin. It's the Lordy, there's more tapes. There's Lordy, <laughs> there's so many tapes. But the McCarthy tapes, you said, this made me feel like I did in 1973 when Butterfield testified there were tapes. They ended the Nixon presidency. The difference is that Republicans didn't just say to each other that Nixon should resign. They told him if he didn't, he'd be convicted on impeachment charges. Hello, Barry Goldwater, learn. <laughs> looming over me yep I, this is why we're soulmates because who knew right that my dad's yeah. running mate is the one that went to nixon and said you got to resign but look at the the cowardice of this party jill in relation to that republican party of my dad and goldwater right it is that kevin mccarthy said it but then you know to trump he didn't have the courage to say it or actually do it exactly it's one thing to say to yourself it's another thing to actually carry it out and do it. And that's the difference between when there was actual facts that people paid attention to and people with moral courage to speak truth to power. And now what's happened? They say it to themselves. They say, oh, Gates, he shouldn't be on Twitter. He's saying things that could be illegal. But do they say it to him ever? No, they don't. They say, I'm going to tell the president he has to resign. This is terrible. He's responsible. Yeah. Do they say word one to him? No, they don't. Doesn't it? It must just make, we all have bombshell fatigue, as I always say, Joe, but you must just feel like there's a Watergate a day. There's like two a day. And it, it, they are impervious to it, this version of the Republican Party. They don't care that they got caught lying. They don't care they're caught on tape. Yeah. They just, I, I mean, it, it's extraordinary, isn't it? It, it is. And, you know, one of the reasons I wrote Watergate Girl, she worked and justice prevailed. And now I feel so much like we've gone backwards and there's no bipartisanship. Democracy is failing. We came very close to losing it in terms of what happened on January 6th and even more so on the lead up to it. Barb McQuaid, one of my sisters in law for the podcast, wrote a wonderful piece about the Sunday night massacre, which talks about the evidence of how close we came to losing our democracy when Trump tried to fire the acting attorney general and put in Jeff Clark, who was a conspiracy theorist who was willing to lie and say, the Department of Justice found fraud in your state, send in alternative electors. That's, that's just, that's really terrifying. And it's a real yeah. gap in the Electoral College Act that might have worked. Well, at the highest levels of our government, that there was someone actually saying Chinese thermostats might be changing votes and <laughs> Dominion machines. <laughs> I mean, it, it's I, it's like Geraldo, I think, is the one that said it. Like, Nixon wouldn't have had to resign if there was a Fox News. Oh. This whole right-wing swamp, right? They just, there is exactly. no conspiracy theory too crazy. There's no lie that they care about. Doesn't matter if they're caught on tape, right? Yeah, it's they've all learned from Donald Trump, who always deny and deflect. Those are his two rules. You deny, deny, deny. And the other thing is the use of propaganda. It is wow. a I, I, I recently had a um, conversation with Ruth Ben Giat, yeah. who yeah. is absolutely brilliant, wrote the book Strongman. And as she's describing Strongman from Mussolini on, she was describing Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. And it was, I mean, I was getting goosebumps listening to her because it was so terrifying. Every tactic and strategy they use are the tactics of fascist authoritarian dictators. Yeah. And if we don't indict soon, they're going to get away with it. And yeah. it's time. Well, it's time. The Department of Justice must act. I'm tired of waiting. Yeah. As this, is most of America. This right wing, right wing conservative scholar, right, just wrote the editorial about how this 2020 was absolutely a dry run for 2024. Yes. I, I, if we don't do something. So this is what I want to ask. It's why I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to ask you about the. Um, Discussions involving the Trump White House about using emergency powers have become an important but little known part of the J6 committee's investigation mm -hmm. in subpoenas, document requests and court filings. The panel has demanded information about any Trump administration pan plans to use emergency presidential powers to invoke martial law or take other steps to overturn the election. Um, Jamie Raskin said, I consider it important to determine to what extent the president was prepared or preparing to use the Insurrection Act 
or make use of any other presidential emergency powers, we have to look at how the existence of an arsenal of residual presidential emergency powers threatens the the traditional peaceful transfer of power in our country. Something you probably never thought we'd have to talk about or figure out how to codify into law, right? Well, I don't think any of our legislation is geared to the type of person that occupied the White House in the last administration. Yeah. which is to say that we've even Richard Nixon basically believed in the rule of law and believed when the Supreme Court said you have to do something that he actually had to do it. Yeah. He believed in the power of the people. He made a U-turn after firing Cox when the people rose up and said, you can't do this. He went, oh, I can't survive this politically. But you're right now with Fox News and all the other right wing media outlets and people living in silos of information and believing all the stuff that's propagandized to them. It's a very different circumstance now. It isn't Watergate. This is way worse and much more dangerous for democracy. I never thought democracy was at stake. Right. I never expected uh, martial law to be declared in an, uh, you know, for totally phony reasons. And, so, and only in our idiocracy would it be thought of and also misspelled at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only misspelled by a Marjorie Taylor Greene. Exactly. Right? By the way, you said someone should tell Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene saying under oath, I don't recall when you do recall is perjury. But yes. is there any way, but the problem is she's going to get away with this, isn't she? <laughs> I she mean, will. Right. It's almost impossible to prove. It doesn't mean it's not perjury. Right. When you say, I don't remember if there's a way of proving you did, like you might have actually confessed to someone, oh, I'm going to go in and say that. And remember during Watergate, one of the crimes was listening to President Nixon say, well, you can always say, I don't remember, I don't recall, even if you do. And that was subornation of perjury by advising yeah. someone to say that when you knew that they remembered. So, you know, it is... Sometimes you can prove it, but most often it's very hard to prove someone actually remembers something they say they don't remember, as opposed to saying, I, like McCarthy did, yeah. I never said that. Yeah. And then you have a tape where he's saying it. Yeah. That's one thing. And but it's saying, understandable. I don't remember if I said it, he could have yeah. gotten away with it. It's understandable that you wouldn't remember you told the president of the United States he should use martial law to overturn the government of the United States. That's not the, <laughs> but she misspelled kind of martial. So right. there's wouldn't, that. Wouldn't stick with you. Yeah. Right. Oh, and I love this. Is speaking of Fox News, did you see the Chiron? I think Laura Ingram interviewed her. Uh-huh. And they spelled martial law the way Marjorie Taylor Greene spelled yeah. it. Whoa. On the Chiron, just yes. to make sure uh. that everybody is as stupid as yeah. Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, okay. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you about, this martial law. So, unlike many other countries, I didn't know this. The United States does not grant press presidents express emergency powers in its constitution. Instead, presidents rely on several acts of Congress to provide emergency authority. The most sweeping is the National Emergencies Act, a 1976 law that allows a president to declare a national emergency at will. Trump declared more national emergencies than any president in a four-year period, including the one that authorized the building of the wall that Congress had declined to fund. So this is why, and John Kelly, by the way, is quoted as saying, other advisors were wasting their time by telling Trump some of their ideas were against the law. He doesn't care, Kelly said. I mean, I, right. So anyway, the emergency statutes were not intended to allow a president to challenge election results. Um, so, uh, And the presidential emergency sta- um, statutes contain fundamental flaws that could lead to abuse is what they're looking at now, well, right? You know, one thing I've learned as a prosecutor is that any law can be gotten around particularly if you don't care about getting caught or being guilty. Um, And there is no law that can prevent wrongdoing by totally corrupt people. And so when you have elected a person like Donald Trump who does not care about the law and has always felt he was above it and would get away with it, it's very hard to control. And our emergency powers were really intended to be used by power. You know, but you shouldn't have to pass laws worrying about, well, will we have a corrupt person who might abuse this power? But I think right now, as we look to amend things like the Electoral Count Act or a crazy person in office who is willing to do anything to stay in power and will abuse that authority that he's given. So we are going to have to be careful about having congressional oversight 
and uh, which is one of the reasons it's so important that the Department of Justice indict people for obstruction of Congress, because otherwise they cannot do their job of oversight. Yeah. Let me, a couple more things I want to ask. The House Select Committee um, has been focusing on the financial practices of the Republican National Committee, and staffers are coming forward to testify. Um, One said that means the committee has more insight than is previously known in the Republican Party's activity in the lead up to January 6th. The interviews underscore the Select Committee's interest in how political messaging by the national GOP, which partnered with the Trump campaign, may have stoked falsehoods about the 2020 election. So what would be their legal culpability? Because it's true, they stoked these same election lies, right? It's, you know, it, it will take a lot um, obviously, perjury is not in play unless you do it under oath. Uh, even though you're you know, lying to the public, that's not a crime. So what is their responsibility? Well, there could be civil liability. There's always that possibility that if you stoked the violence, you're responsible for the consequences of it. And that, that could be an issue. So we'll it's going to take some creative legal thinking to hold all the people who are involved in the consequences of the big lie. Yeah. And yeah. I hope they are because it's the only way to stop them. I think things like the Dominion and Smartmatic lawsuits against Fox may have a, a serious impact on how they report the news. Okay. Will they be more careful in not promoting conspiracy theories and blatant lies, things they know are false? or that any reasonable person should have known was false, and therefore you can't say it because there are consequences. 